different. So we're just going to focus on what I call the big three. Right here, you see the actual population numbers. If you actually want to know, well, Anne, how big, what's the number of people, this is what you're seeing right here, which is why you can see the two biggest generations. We call them the bookend generations, because they bookend around the smaller generation. But let's get into the interesting stuff here. Let's talk about what does this all mean. So there's a lot of research that talks about the generations, and it says that there are three things that impact each cohort, and cohort's just a word for a group. And those three things that impact each generation are technological things, societal things, and political things. These are events that happened during each generation's time, during their formative years. So think 20s, late teens. There are certain events that happened in our American history that then sent a message to the cohort. And that message then created their own language, their own belief system, their own thoughts about what is appropriate work, inappropriate work, based on that. So what you're going to see right now is a little movie. You get to sit back, relax, enjoy your coffee. We're going to start with boomers and then go X to Y. We're going to go political, then technological, and then societal. And what this is is you're going to see a number of images rolling over you very quickly. I will be talking at the same time, but not necessarily about what you see on the screen, so we will do a recap afterwards. However, I did want to say to you, especially for the Gen Y, that if you see something on the screen and you hear everybody else laughing and saying, oh, I remember that, oh, I remember that, and you have no idea what they're talking about, you might want to ask during break what it was, because these are fairly significant events. So let's start with baby boomers first. So what was going on? in the baby boomer era between 1946 and 64 that shaped this generation? What was the message that they got from this generation? Well, first of all, it was a crazy time. It was a tumultuous time. We had hawks versus doves. We had Kent State. We had Vietnam. We had JFK assassination, Bobby Kennedy assassination, Martin Luther King assassination. And what did this generation do? The biggest generation there ever was, they said, we shall overcome. It sounds trite right now. It's like, isn't that a song, Anne? Okay, but it is a mantra for this generation. We, it's a we generation, it's a team generation. Very important to remember that when you're working with a boomer. Overcome, they will do whatever it takes to make sure that a solution is found. What was happening technology-wise? Man on the moon, huge influence for this generation. This generation saw that they truly could do the impossible. And this generation still wants to do the impossible. What were they seeing for societal norms? What were the messages they were getting about what's appropriate, what's inappropriate? Sidney Poitier, Catherine Hepburn, guess who's coming to dinner? That was a big deal to see an African-American man with Catherine Hepburn. So as you start to think about this and you think, well, what shaped boomers and how do I work with boomers? How do I be more effective with boomers? You can start to see what shaped their psyche and therefore shaped their language and their belief system. It's not good or bad. It's not right or wrong. It just is. And if you want to be a more effective leader in your practice, if you want to understand this generation better, you need to understand where they're coming from. We're going to move on to Gen X now. So Gen X is born between 1965 and 1980. So think about it. What was going on during that period of our history? What was going on politically? No matter what your political beliefs, if you look at the research and you look at the media, we have gone from Camelot in the White House to a crook in the White House. We have gone from being a superpower to the Iran hostage crisis. We have gone from man on the moon to challenger explosion. It's a very different time. Again, not good or bad, right or wrong, but very different. So this group of people who grew up during this time that we call Gen X got very different messages about what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, how do I behave. And you can start to see some of the things that shaped them during this time. When you think about technology, this is really where the fun starts to come in. Okay, for those of you who don't know, that is a music player. Okay, that is a computer. That's an answering machine. That's a photocopier. And yes, that's a phone. Okay, 
all of a sudden technology is happening much faster than people realize and the world is shifting. Now we have MTV. Now things are possible out there in Silicon Valley. All of a sudden a whole new culture is starting to rise and people are starting to think a little bit differently about, well, what does this mean for my future? What does this mean for organizational work? And how do I fit into all of this? So as you can see, this generation raised very differently thinks about things differently. Probably one of the biggest influences of this generation, divorce. All of a sudden, this generation goes from coming home, milk and cookies, mom in general was home, to before school daycare, after school daycare, latchkey kid, all those things shape this generation. And again, it's not good or bad, right or wrong, but when you sometimes think about someone you're working with and you think, what is up with Anne? because I'm a Gen X, get to make fun of myself. It's not that Anne is trying to make your life miserable. It's that Anne comes from a different culture. And you need to understand that culture so that you can work better with them. And finally, let's go on to Gen Y. Okay, Gen Y, born between 1981 and 2001. So what shaped this generation? The second biggest generation, the generation that is going to come into full force very soon. What shaped them politically, societally, and with technology? Well, politically, you can start to see all the things, and probably the biggest one, 9-11. 9-11 impacted everybody in this room. But think about it from someone who is in their formative years, and think about that they see those towers falling again and again and again, because at this point, we are streaming technology. JFK assassination, you saw it on the news. You saw it a headline in the newspaper. 9-11 impacted every Gen Y like you wouldn't believe. And if there is one message from 9-11 for this generation, it is about community. People say to me all the time, what's up with 5,000 friends on Facebook? Like, why do they have to have 5,000 friends on Facebook? It's about community. So if you're working with Gen Y, or you're going to be bringing on new Gen Y into your team, you need to understand what it is that shaped them so you can understand how to motivate them and get the best out of them. So if you're a visual learner, go ahead and grab that cheat sheet, and we're going to do a little summary right now. So you want to look at the pretty picture side, and you'll see there I've got all the different generations, and I've got categories. So we're going to be on the top category right here. So let's just talk real quick about baby boomers. If you are working with boomers, and you're trying to think, how do I motivate them? How do I inspire them? How do I get the best out of them? You need to understand a few key things about them. First of all, this is a we generation. This is a team generation. This is a consensus generation. This generation makes decisions by consensus. This generation wants to make a difference in the world. It is very important to them, especially at this stage in their life, about legacy. So as you think about this generation, you think about how can I motivate them, how can we work together better, you want to remember these things. Because the next generation, Gen X, completely different animal. Think about this generation, right? All the things that impacted us, it's not about team. It's not about we. Because, well, let's think. Can't trust my government to take care of me. Look what happened with Watergate. Can't trust my family to take care of me. Look what happened with divorce. So you know what? I'm going to take care of myself. So we're called the me generation. You know that term W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? It came about in Gen X times. This generation, think about what showed us the money, Tom Cruise, Gordon Gecko, greed is good. Now does that mean we're cynical? Does that mean we are distrustful? Yes, we can be. However, if you show us the loyalty and you show us the reason to work with you, we will be so much more loyal than you can ever imagine. But when you think about this generation, you think about, okay, well, I'm a boomer and I have a partner who's a Gen X. What do I do? We don't seem to see eye to eye. You need to remember part of that may be a generational lens because this generation is I. This generation is very micro. This generation who has a second degree in college, it's an MBA. This generation wants the facts. They want the numbers. This generation are risk takers. Highest buyer of lottery tickets. 
Gen X, okay? This generation will take risks. So if you're trying to think about how to negotiate the team, think about that. And then finally, the pendulum swings back. The pendulum swings back to Gen Y, millennials. We go back to we, we go back to team, we go back to wanting to make a difference. And again, if there's one word for this generation, it is about connections in a community. This generation is desperate to connect after what they saw in 9-11. So for you, thinking about how do I inspire this young person? How do I motivate this person? Or motivate myself if you're Gen Y? It's about connecting to the clients. It's about connecting to a greater cause. This generation is also about balance. I jokingly say, not always true, that a Gen Y's day is 24 hours. We're gonna work, we're gonna maybe check a little social media, we're gonna work, we're gonna do some work out, we're gonna go work and network. X's, very much in our boxes. Boomers, a little bit wider. So as you start to think about all of this and you start to think, well, what does this all mean for me and, and what do I do with all this information? That's what we're gonna work on for the rest of today. Because we're gonna do a number of exercises now to help you understand all of this and help you put it into practice in your firms.